Is season four going to save Diablo? Test realm feedback after 40 hours. So let's begin with the PID, the new endgame content. You have 200 levels you can dive into. You're fighting against a timer, just killing mobs, no loot dropping. At the end, there's a boss fight waiting for you. And during this boss fight, there's boss echoes being summoned. Those are the red things coming that are trying to simply one hit you. Because in the deeper pits, that's more or less a one hit every time. And the reward for doing this is loot and master working materials. We'll get to master working in a bit. Now, the interesting part of the pit is that you're finally getting rewarded for being good. Because if you finish a pit level in three to four minutes, you actually go three levels deeper. If you only finish in five to six minutes, you go two levels deeper. And if you're slower than that, it's only one level. The better you are, the better your build is, the faster you can zoom through the new end game. Now, the biggest complaint about the new end game content is that after level 100, there's no reason to keep going. It stops scaling. Tier 100 of the pit introduces level 199 opponents. And from that point onwards, they don't scale harder. The only thing that happens is that the life of the bosses goes slightly up, but that's about it. Now you would say level 200 of the pit is probably going to have better loot. It's not. The loot of a level 200 is the same of a level 99. There's not more uniques dropping, not more greater affixes, and you're certainly not getting double or triple the amount of legendaries. The only reason to push deeper is your personal accomplishment. Now, not every activity needs to have a reward to be worth it, but I would like my time to be valued because I'm pushing down to level 200 of the pit. I'm taking the effort into my hands and I would be expecting better loot for my efforts. But in this case, my time is essentially being wasted by the game and there's no carrot at the end of the pit. This could easily be fixed by simply handing out better loot. And when it comes down to the challenge, either make the pit endless for the people that really like to challenge themselves or keep scaling after level 100 and just live with the fact that not everyone is going to reach level 200 because the scaling is going to reach crazy values. To beat these crazy values, we do have tempering and masterworking. That's the new endgame system to make your items go bonkers because legendary items have three affixes now and you can add two more with tempering. And these two affixes you're adding are hyper specialized. For example, more bone critical strike damage or the chance for your skill to mages to hit twice. A core skill that gets double casted as well, increasing the radius of your skills, the durations, or simply reducing the resource cost so much that you're almost casting your skills for free. After you've done this tempering and have a five total affix on your item, you can masterwork them. Masterwork will increase the quality of every single affix by 5% 12 times. And every four steps, you get another 25% increase. That's super fun because it can create some uber power creep items. Your plus three in a core skill can end up to be plus five, six, or even plus seven, making your damage go off the shards as you would need to beat that level 200 of the pits. Now, the problem with master working is you can actually fail. You would assume 12 upgrades, that's 12 clicks, and I have it 12 times upgraded. Ah, uh -uh. after the first four levels of the master working, you can start failing the master work. And that's plenty bad because the chance for the later levels is 20%. Every time you fail, you get 10% up. Regardless of that, you end up sometimes clicking 10 times just to get it up one level. Your time is essentially being wasted. I would call retention-based gameplay because time spent in the game is a good time. But this is literally just time wasted in the game because I want to get my item masterworked really quick. I want to see the outcome to then potentially reset the masterwork, which is possible, and then redo it because the 25% every four levels is completely random. But I'm not going to do this because the time spent literally clicking that master working button is so humongous. I mean, sometimes you sit five to 10 minutes just to master work an item to then reset it to then another five minutes to then reset it. And this could have been a thing of a minute or two if you just threw to see the result and then redo it. Instead of wasting my time, Blizzard, why not bump up the cost of master working? Make it double, triple, or quadruple. Because right now I have the material to 40 times master work every single item. So over 400 master works in total. But I'm simply not doing it because it takes too much time to do it at this point. If you bump up the material cost, but you remove the success chance, it is an overall better experience. And at least you have it in your hand because I can farm the pit, have the materials, and then I can do it as much as I want, as often as I want, but without wasting my time on failed, 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 
failed because that's just absolutely annoying. Now over to happy times without a single negative point, and that is the new Helltide. New Helltide is frankly spoken brilliant. They merged the Blood Harvest from season two with what we had in season three on the Arcane Tremors and put that together in one event right now. Helltide has a threat meter that fills up and you're getting invaded by the forces of hell with the Helltide commander at the end that can even drop boss materials for the boss letter for more uniques. And while that is a constant threat going on, you have new events in the Helltide with the Helltide towers that have kind of like a little horde mode going on that you have to beat. And while while you're opening chests, beating Helltide commanders, doing the horde mode, you're dropping baneful hearts that are used to summon the queen of the Helltide, which also drops boss ladder materials and is quite the challenge. There's tons of monsters being summoned. The whole Helltide is being noticed that you're essentially doing it by a little ping on the map. So you'll meet other players that will help you beat the queen. Other players can summon her as well, and you can go there to just leech off them. Overall, it's a grand good experience that makes the Helltide an absolute W, especially now you can start from world tier one and two on with the Helltide for leveling. From a happy thing to a very sad thing, and that is the new tormented bosses. They brought us level 200 boss versions of Varshan, Beast of Ice, and all that stuff. So you can summon a super version, and it's quite challenging to kill and an absolutely good experience, especially when you're doing it solo. The problem is if you're doing it solo, you need five times the amount of boss materials of the current boss to summon them. That means a tormented Grégoire costs instead of five living steel, 25. If you're farming that solo, that's quite the time investment, especially some of the boss materials are actually way more iffy to get than living steel. And not only that, the actual bosses are not worth it loot wise. If you kill a Grig, he usually gives you a shard of agony. These shards of agony are used to summon Duriel or uber unique loot. The problem is, if I now spend five times the material, five shards of agony end of the day, to summon a super Grig, he will only drop one single shard of agony. So why would I summon a tormented boss to end up having less materials for the next boss? I'm being essentially punished right now for summoning them. Yes, if you kill one of the tormented bosses for the first time, so one of those six tormented bosses, you get a resplendent spark that is needed to craft an uber unique. That's pretty cool, but that's only one time. So you're essentially going to one time summon a tormented boss to one time kill him to get that spark. And then you're completely going to forget about that game mechanic and never engage with it ever again. Lower the summon materials, higher the rewards, make it possible for solo players to actually not waste just hours upon hours upon hours upon hours, force us to play as a team only to beat certain bosses. Over to the cool things again, something called greater affixes. Later in the game, in World Tier 4, items can drop with a greater affix. That would be one of the normal affix boosted by 25%. So instead of plus 3 or plus 2 into a certain skill, you can get plus 4. I've seen some uniques with plus 5 to a skill, and that can get masterwork to even more. The same goes for critical strike chance. Usually it's a plus 60, straight up can go into a plus 90. And on a 200 weapon plus 120 critical strike damage, that can then masterwork even further up. And the best part is it's not only one greater affix that can drop an item, it's multiple greater affix. So you can get a unique with three to four greater affixes or just normal items with up to three greater affixes, making them the most desirable items in the game. You can then masterwork and temper them to get the absolute super item. Now, the problem with these greater affixes is they are not really visible in your inventory. Sure, you see when they're dropped on the ground, there's a tiny one. But if you actually have them in your inventory, there is no differentiation to the other gear. So I'll open my stuff up. I have 10 items and I don't know which one actually is a greater affix item and which one ain't. That's not the vibe because then again, we're back to bad loot. I'll be having to hover over every single item to actually find my greater affix item. Give them a different color, just like you have with unique items, make them red maybe, like Primals in Diablo 3, or give them a tiny symbol that just differentiates them as a great affix item when you have your inventory open. Now there's other grievances like the Veil Crystal cost being way too damn high because everything is now that crafting material. Rerolling, masterworking, tempering, enchanting, everything costs Veiled Crystal and everything was quite expensive on the test server. That should get fixed because right now, in order to actually enchant a single aspect on an item, I would have to spend 30 minutes farming the Helltide. And that's not fun because I have 10 items that would need 10 aspects. So if I need 30 minutes for every single item to be enchanted, yeah. 
and that's the base mechanic of the game especially sometimes you want to change an enchantment three times in a row to just experiment that's a huge amount of retention time spent in the game but it would be again time spent miserable in the game because you're just trying to use the base mechanics but you're being punished so hard with higher material cost that it ain't just simple fun anymore that's not saying we want things for free we would just things reasonably priced why does master working get kept by veiled crystals and not kept by the master working material because i am out of crystals but i have 400 times the amount of master working materials already clearly makes zero sense because why do i even then have master working materials if i can't run out of them all in all, the package wrapped up together is shaping to be a good future for Diablo. The master working and tempering will create quite some power creep to get absolute god mode builds, which is intended because you want this power creep. You want the absolute god mode builds. It's okay if things get silly to a degree if you drop a triple affix, quad affix, unique, and it goes off the charts. That's fun. That's not bad. That's fun because these items are still rather rare to get and pull off. Not everyone is going to have them. It's still going to be a grind to go there and the pit finally provides something that you can dive into in an end game form and season form itself will also have some form of seasonal mechanic some form of even more end game happening yes diablo right now at this point is still missing a kind of challenge something for the one percent five percent super hardcore gamers but for the casuals the game experience just got 400 times better and will be an overall improved fun what do you think? What are your pain points that you would like to see addressed? And if you're asking yourself, how's the new level experience going to be with the three and two affix items? Well, here's a video wrapping it up and explaining it to you. Enjoy. Thanks for watching.